Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Ricardo de Silva. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred Eucharist, bringing to mind our sinfulness before a loving God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. It was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When he makes himself an offering for sin, he shall see his his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one My servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. May May your your merciful merciful love be upon us us as we hope in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and his merciful love fills the earth. May your merciful love be upon us, as as we hope in you, you, O Lord. Yes, the Lord's eyes are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May your merciful love be upon us, as we hope in you, O Lord. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. May your merciful love be upon us, as we hope in you, O Lord. 
May your merciful love be upon us, as we hope in you, O Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who, in every respect, has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, our Lord. At that time, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the chalice that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The chalice that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized but to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John, and Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think I've ever realized quite how arrogant the disciples are. And I've certainly failed to recognize their brazenness with their teacher, Jesus. Their self-serving entitlement has never been as plain to me. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. What a cheek. How dare they speak to Jesus like that? But I suppose it may not be too far from what we do in our prayers all the time. Make demands of God, tailored precisely to our liking. It is also advice I often give to people who ask my counsel. Be bold. Tell God exactly what you want or need from God. Ask, and it shall be given unto you the scriptures tell us. So what's really the difference between my advice and the brazen demand James and John, the sons of Zebedee, make of Jesus today? I suppose on the one hand, I'd like to think the requests we make of Jesus in our prayer are not quite as demanding or direct. 
But if I'm honest, they probably are. Which is why perhaps their ask of Jesus provokes such a strong reaction in me. My phrasing, your phrasing, may not be quite as sharp when addressing the Lord, but our intention probably no different. We all want things our way, if at all possible. And maybe Jesus was no different. Take the words he speaks in his agony at the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, if this cup can pass me by. Even knowing the cup couldn't pass him by, Jesus begs a different outcome of his heavenly Father. And in our society and our church, it's no different. If we can at all control the outcome, we will. The difference, perhaps, for us is that we will do it at all costs, and often to save ourselves and preserve things to our liking, which is exactly what the brothers James and John sought to do. Give us a place next to you. Choose us as your favorites. Let us share your power, pleasure, honor. And it's clear, given the rage expressed among the other ten, that they too wanted preferential treatment, to be picked by God. They wanted Jesus to express a preference, ranking them all in importance. It was also a familiar worldview for them, even a worldview based in Scripture. Their sense was of a messianic banquet, where, as on earth, at the, as at the end of days in the heavens, the priest Messiah would be seated at the head of the table, and to his left and right, people would be seated in order of importance. The expectation was that Jesus was not unlike an earthly ruler and played the same rules that governed life in society, where social rank determined status and power. The disciples just didn't get it. They wanted to be sure that there was something in it for them. At first, as we saw weeks ago, the discussion was over who was the greatest among them on earth. Now the discussion has evolved somewhat. It's as if they were hedging their bets, doing a cost-benefit analysis. Okay, so if I agree to become a servant on earth, then can I at least be the greatest in heaven? Would my eternal reward be greater? If I sacrifice earthly riches and privileges? They didn't understand that the model of leadership was one of servanthood, whether on earth or in heaven, that required suffering and a total submission of their own wills. And isn't this a calculation we still experience in our church? We constantly hear our faith framed in terms of heavenly reward, speaking of sacrifice on earth to gain compensation in the afterlife, forgetting that the price for our salvation, our eternal reward, has already been purchased by Jesus' blood. The Son of Man, who, as our gospel reminds us today, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many a slave for all. It was as difficult for the disciples as it is for us to believe what Jesus came to teach. And for years, those in power in the church have for the most part thought the same. The church is a hierarchy, and therefore there is an order, and that order accords rank and importance. The Pope, cardinals, bishops, monsignors, priests, deacons, consecrated religious brothers, sisters, lay men, lay women. Or, as Pope Francis put it recently to a group of about a thousand people across the church's hierarchical spectrum in his own diocese, Rome, there is much resistance to overcome the image of a church rigidly divided between leaders and subordinates, he said, between those who teach and those who have to learn, forgetting that God likes to overturn positions. The Pope shared these thoughts ahead of the Synod of Bishops, which was opened 
by a mass at the Vatican at the beginning of this month and will involve bishops, priests, women, and men religious, and the lay faithful in each of the more 3,000 dioceses of the Catholic Church worldwide, including you and me. I have come here to encourage you to take the synodal process seriously, said Pope Francis to those assembled, and to tell you that the Holy Spirit needs you. Listen to the Spirit. Listen to each other, he said. Do not leave anyone out. Speaking about the process of the synod and reflecting on previous synods in the church's history, the Pope added, it may be necessary for us too to change direction and overcome convictions that hold us back and prevent us from moving and walking together. We always want to compete for place of honor, of recognition. And the Pope recognized that. He said, there is always temptation to go it alone. And then he spoke about the tendency each one has towards claiming authority for themselves. As if, he said, when he ascended into heaven, the Lord had left a void to be filled. The Greek word for synod, according to Pope Francis, means walking together, where we all have a voice and can express God's will, where we can all teach and learn from each other. And, Pope Francis said, discern the ways present in the gospel. Not unlike the message we hear in today's readings, the Pope reminded the faithful in Rome addressing Catholics throughout the world, and even those outside the Catholic faith, if they were listening to him, that the message of salvation that Jesus brings is for all. It is necessary, he said, to feel part of one great people who are the recipients of the divine promises, open to a future that awaits everyone to participate in the banquet prepared by God for all peoples. And lest, like the disciples, we should still think that to be called God's people is a prize of the lucky few, the Pope stressed what he meant by all people. If the parish is the house of all in the neighborhood, not an exclusive club, I recommend that you leave the doors and windows open. Do not limit yourselves to those who frequent the parish or think like you. Let everyone enter. Allow yourselves to go out to meet people and to be questioned by people. Let their questions be your questions. Allow yourselves to work together, to walk together. The Spirit will lead you. Do not be afraid to enter into dialogue. It is the dialogue of salvation. And so, friends, as we enter the synodal process with the church, which began at the beginning of this month and will go on until October 2023, until 2023, let us remember that call to all God's people, that among us there is no distinction that we are all called to see the vision of our church that calls us to unity at last in the heavenly banquet where we will all feast at God's table. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. For all all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are called to serve all of God's people. Let us carry out our responsibilities as disciples and call on the name of the Lord on behalf of all in need. For Francis, our Pope, and all the world's bishops, that they will continue to encourage the faithful to nurture their faith and grow in their love of God. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For all in government, that their leadership may be one of service rather than of power and absolute control. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted for their religious beliefs, that their rights may be respected and their voices heard. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer for us all, that our hearts may be open to the action of the Holy Spirit and our faith ignited and fanned into flame, and to boldly share in the synodal process in which the Church has now embarked and called us to be a part. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for all who are sick or suffering, homeless or housebound that they will know Christ's healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may receive mercy and grace and rejoice forever in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you have made us yours in Christ. Open our hearts that we may hear more clearly your message of love and live more closely in accordance with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world and you governed all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather women and men whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of his Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, 
and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Buti, our Bishop, with all the bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of, the, of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith alone you have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art Amen. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. 
His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you, by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God.